I've had so many inconvenient injuries. There's like on the oddest, like they're on like a knuckle or my elbow or just like places that I like actually like hit constantly so they're not able to heal effectively and I just broke open a scab. Ew, gross. I know, sorry guys. But not gross is PVT. Well, depends on your point of view, I guess. I don't think it's gross. That's off left. That's the pink Protoss. It is Zest on Nightshade. In the bottom right, it's the red Terran Cure. Spring forward. Yeah, I said roll back. It's my bad. So yeah, it turned 2 a.m. and now it's boom, 3 a.m. Guys, just think of it as our own anime time skip. And now we're into the future. We're all entirely new people. Much like the time skip in Naruto. Where actually no one really changed. Alright, alright, alright. So... Um, lots to talk about with these two players. Lots to gush about, honestly. And since we have no proxy and no early aggression, I can go ahead and gush all I want. Yeah. So, Cure is the... I mean, he's still a hot topic, alright? His Katavite performance wasn't up to the hype he was receiving for being number two on Illigilac and maybe briefly number one, I guess. Or his online performances, where he's been dominating many times, but he still did very well. I mean, it's actually it was a very high bar for some of these guys that we were talking about. You know, Cyril, we just wanted him to like win, right? And we're like, what? He like buckled under pressure once in a round of four. Boo! Like, you know, there's we actually put a lot of pressure on these guys. So I want to say congrats to Cure, but still, kind of waiting for him to actually be the best Terran. Where. Maru was able to kind of cling on to that title, right? He got the farthest in Katowice. There has been no Super Tournament yet. There's no GSL announcements. So right now, just with Tournament results, we're kind of looking at Maru for heading the pack and the Innovation, actually, right? And then Cure, like that? Something like that? Literally cast the Tournament, already forgot the standings. It's all good. But anyways, anyways. Cure is still damn good, and he's very good online. This is the Korean server against a Korean player. This is where he's supposed to be the strongest, right? But Zest, his one weakness was maybe PvZ. That obviously wasn't, well, I guess, hmm. Depends on which matchup you watch. If you watch Zest versus Sterile, it's obviously not a weak matchup. If you watch Rogue versus Zest, then clearly it is Zest's worst matchup. Isn't that funny how that goes? But his PvP is always dominant. Always. Literally. Like, every iteration, every meta, every year, Zest has been fine in PvP. PvT, he's been kind of maybe a little bit fluctuating, but he's also been very good at PvT for the most part. So, while Cure is amazing online, and he has to face Protoss occasionally to be amazing online, Zest is best in my heart at this. But, if I'm going to be real for a second, and stop being, you know, heart-biased here... Zest, despite, you know, this this very common, very standard, very effective build he's doing, his macro, obviously up to pro standards, he's a professional, second place IEM, blah, 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 blah. The way he plays this is actually not perfect at all. <laughs> like, if you want to watch perfect play with this opener, with what we're seeing right now, right here, you watch Trap, 100%. But if you want to be a fangirl, then you watch Zest. He's still good, but there's definitely some problems with the macro, actually. The point where pro gamers are kind of making fun of him in Home Story Cup. So, I love his style. I think he can beat a guy like here, absolutely. But, considering their online performances and their respective, like, matchups here, I actually think it's going to go to Cure. What of my job is very effectively handled, though. I will say this is a great start for Zest fans out there. In fact, isn't losing a single probe, despite Cure trying to get a couple of these. 
Very nicely handled. Very nicely indeed. Also had a shield battery that he was able to cancel in time. That was supposed to block out the units. It didn't, but... One of those just uh, clever timings from Cure still did not end up mattering. Zest is able to save all the minerals he possibly can and all the probes he possibly can while completely shutting down the harassment of Terran. So it's actually a very strong start. Um, are they using Gameheart? It doesn't, it doesn't look... Maybe not. Maybe no. I don't know. Anyways, but still, not many probes died. All right, so what next, right? So Zest deals with that very well. He goes into a single forge upgrade, which actually seems to be the more common way of playing this nowadays. I think of IEM, I saw one double forge. Plenty of no forge, sure, but like one double forge and just a lot more single forge. It's a little less greedy is a, was what I can determine. So that's literally an extra century, which might not seem like a big deal, but... Actually, the difference of like one Guardian Shield and a couple of Force Fields, as opposed to one Guardian Shield and one Force Field, or only one Guardian, like, it's actually a big deal. Um, obviously, anything else that costs 100 100 so this Immortal could be faster. The Charge, I don't think it's faster, but yeah. But it is interesting to see, with a single Forge, you don't go for armor with this style, you actually go for attack. Um, considering he's not, like, doing the heaviest Blink Stalker focus I've ever seen, I'm actually really surprised with that plus one attack. I'm just, like, I'm just kind of now thinking on it, you know, even though we've seen it <laughs> in the IEM. Well, uh, his Stalkers are going to have to sacrifice a few of their lives, perhaps, or maybe not. Maybe just a lot of weak Stalkers, but on the right side, more importantly, Woodamine's getting fantastic shots. Uh, not so much. Take out a sentry, which is nice, but the two sentries over here, one of them had the guardian shield, which is probably the most important. And uh, everything else survived there, so. Zealot's not bulking up too much there. Stalkers did mostly survive, took care of the drop, and Cure not finding much damage. And also, Zest is not mismacking like he sometimes does. <laughs> Here he does have his third finished. Was that a location? I don't know. Probably. Turning into an orbital, transferring its SCVs. It's all about smooth macro while you do this aggression. Because so far, right, Kira's kind of been a little bit slapped in the face. Like, not full, like, metal gauntlet slapped in the face, and he's just unconscious now. But he's kind of been, like, slapped by that little, like, dainty, like, glove, right? It's not so hot, but if his macro is really good behind it, then, I mean, the, the world is still kind of his oyster. But the more this goes on, the more times he's slapped daintily with a little glove, you know, a little, like, satin glove, like, it, it, the more it hurts. Um, until you eventually are, are facing a metal gauntlet of Colossus and Storms and not fun times. So, Kira would like to find some damage, or he would like to not take any damage himself. You know, it's like either one would be great, or both. Doesn't really take too much damage, it's a little lost mining time. But uh, he'll need to think about Zest's transition. The most common transition at this point is definitely into the Colossus. Uh, I think the style was first developed. It was a very obvious transition into Storm, but it was, like, too obvious, right? <laughs> and you try and actually fit into Colossus. Um, not only giving you more stability in your army, because Storms can be hit or miss, right? If there's good splitting, if there's good reactions, you know, they, they split away a couple Marauders. Colossus is a little more dependable. It's also a little bit tougher for the uh, the Terran to to handle themselves. The double Star Ports can be very, very expensive. The Cure is purely on bio right now. Still a decent number of Widow Mines as well. Zest getting a little overconfident there. Not realizing there was so much still behind that. It's only Marauders as well with decent upgrades. 1 1 1 1 plus 2 armor finally started here. The Encronid as well. Stalker's looking for any opportunity to grab a, a Medivac or a Marauder. Both actually very good targets. Or even a Widomite, actually, would be nice. But he's just buying time for the Colossus. Once the Colossus are out, Cure's going to be in a bit of trouble. One Colossus is out. Zealots are trying to be split. It's a little bit. Not the best, but, you know, little goes a long way. Cure is still very heavy on the Marauder count and Medivac count, man. He's actually got so much healing here that the Colossus almost look like... It will almost look like it won't matter. <laughs> But that's where the Immortals come in. That's where Stalkers hopefully come in a little bit too. Not the best upgraded, but still. 
definitely the Immortals can power through the high Marauder count where the Colossus is, like, kind of helping. <laughs> but then eventually you get to two or three Colossus, and, you know, of course they'll burn through anything. Actually, only to two Colossus and... Extend with Thermal okay. So eventually we'll see the Templar Archives thrown down, but that is still a ways to go. Fourth base is being thrown down first and foremost. That's exactly where Cure was headed to. Some zealots intercepts, some zealots over the left side as well. Cure scans in the army's location. Okay, so he's checking to see where the army was. He knows he's being chased. He wants to get a better concave in this. He wants to have his widow mines burrow, tackling any zealots on the front lines. But actually, the zealots mostly gone. They're actually attacking over here, where there's a large number of reinforcements dealing with them. Not too bad. Cure taking a supply lead right now, an upgrade lead, I believe, as well. 2 1 to 1 1. Zest going for a bit of an anti timing. A yeah, Guardian Shields popping. He thinks he can go for it. There's not a lot of Vikings right now, so the Colossus will be able to free fire for quite some time, but not a bad concave for our Terror. And on top of that, oh god, on top of that ramp as well. And the Zealots are not here. I don't even know if they, were they ever here? Did they just disappear? Were they really never worked in? Because those Immortals took the brunt of the army. And they're not supposed to do that. They're supposed to be helping and taking out every single last one of these very weak Marauders, but maybe they can still do it. The Colossus go down. One still lives, but the Marauders so damn low. The Medivac's out of energy. It ended up being a very, very close fight. I actually thought that was going to go a lot better for Cure. But, because uh, the Immortals went down so fast, you know? But the Marauders were taking that fire from everything else. They were getting awfully low, and the Medivacs were starting to get drained on energy because he was building Vikings. He wasn't building more Medivacs. So it actually turned surprisingly close, in my opinion, for Resist. Because that actually was supposed to be a disaster, I feel. <laughs> this wasn't a, that was a very bold push into a concave of better upgraded bio with very few Zealots to help you out. That just... That was not supposed to go well. It didn't go well. I thought it would go a little bit worse, but it is what it is. Zest now down 40 supply. Obviously still not in a great position. Is forced to uh, maybe take some uh, risky maneuvers that go into the disruptors. I mean, was this his plan anyways? Maybe, right? Because you want two, maybe three Colossus, and the disruptors are probably better than more Colossus. But especially if you're going to fall behind after an army fight like that. I'm definitely going to disruptors. There's not much that a Terran player can do against that. There's no instant counter. There's no EMP to take away their energy. There's no Vikings to chase around over terrain. You just gotta split and split some more. Okay, really, that's actually kind of the answer. Focus fire as well, I guess. And if you can, get to Liberators and so be it, but transferring over to Liberators, really, it bogs down your army, you know? Your army's already getting slower and more focused on main engagements the more that you go deep and to the tech tree of Terran. Not that we've had a lot of drops or anything like that in this game, but, you know, as soon as you start adding on Vikings and Ghosts, it gets a little bit slower. You add on Liberators, it's a lot slower. Not because of their speed, but because they have to siege up, right? So it really changes the pacing of the game. Is it the ultimate composition? Perhaps. But you also are at this point where you're, you're not exactly rolling in dough. So... Liberator is not super easy to transfer over into, especially if you're going to get harassed like this. Zealots, oh, this warp prism barely got past the missile turrets. Are you kidding? Going for the armory, going for the Ghost Academy. The Ghost Academy actually researching the very important shockwave upgrade is not going to be completed. The last three ghosts are going to pop out here. The Zealots will be cleaned up, and Cure does hold the front line as well, but Zest making a powerful maneuver right there to come back. He had already replenished most of the army. The supplies were looking a lot better since he was able to get four bases up pretty smoothly behind that maybe not great attack, but he needed a little bit extra, and that War Prism certainly did it. It is going to go down, unfortunately. Uh, hello? Okay, yeah. I was like, is it actually going to get another warp in? It does go down, but it took away the upgrades. It took away the plus three armor, actually. Plus three attack has already started. So it took away an upgrade, any ship weapon upgrades, and the Ghost Academy was a very big target. You definitely want the EMP upgrade. I mean, that's a that was such a drastic change when they added that upgrade. PVT instantly got a lot smoother for Terrans. A lot more Terrans were willing to go into the late game with it. It's a very, very helpful upgrade. But Cure, despite not having that upgrade, is going to be able to hold strong defensively. Zest expands again. Is looking for any great shots with Disruptors. A couple of Marauders go down there. It's not too bad. With this many Disruptors, there's only so much splitting you can ever do. This is usually when you really are thinking about moving into Liberators. You're kind of setting up the transition. You're starting to bank a little bit of cash. 
You're getting your upgrade, at least plus one ship weapons, right? I'm not here. <laughs> Using half a dozen snipes on Zealots, that's weird. Uh, the army of Zest is on top of a very weak, would-be planetary. Force floats come down. There's not- there's actually nothing that Kier can do about that. The Vikings, however, don't care and are gonna grab the Colossus at the very least. So many Vikings, actually, but it'll kill the Vikings. Planetary not going down, not being target fired, actually a bit awkward right now, but the Disruptors trying to get the best shots possible got some great shots. I mean, look at the blood that was left over. Look at it. There's so much blood. And then Zealot's also got to the natural of the uh, Terran's base. Cure falling down on that supply. He's down 15 workers, about 20 army supply. And he's falling behind on those upgrades. I guess the armory did just complete. He's got his production back up and running. But he took a fatal blow there trying to protect that planetary. Such an awkward little engagement. And Disruptor is really being a key factor there. He's going to be up to 10 Disruptors soon with 3, 2, no, 3, 3, 1. Actually, on those upgrades. What do you even do against this? If you don't have liberators, you can't afford liberators. You just get the biggest concave possible, I suppose. And that's exactly what Kira's trying to get to. But splitting Vikings, yeah, good luck with that. Other splits are fine, but not, not so much with Vikings. He actually needs to kind of tear down these rocks, I would say. And then maybe get, like, a literal full surround. And then he's got a shot. Akira is desperately trying to hold on to continued zealot run buys as well. Zest happily on five bases, mining 69 workers. The sexiest number. And he's just going to continue firing away with those balls. Thank you, Sir Christophe, for the gifted sub. Kira desperately holding on, still taking some damage here and there from the Zealots. I mean, these things are grabbing, like, maybe a Ghost, maybe a Marauder, not a whole lot. But still, better trades here for Zest, no matter which way you slice it. Maybe not this one. Maybe this one was a bad trade. <laughs> Especially as Kira gets all fancy-like. You fancy. But he needs to be. A couple Liberators would be so amazing on this planetary. Oh my god, it'd be so amazing. Maybe even a couple wouldn't have been enough. Maybe five or six would have been enough. Here is absolutely losing this game. That fourth base, it was surprising it lasted as long as it did. Zest starting to really manhandle Cure. As soon as that Warprism got in, I mean, there wasn't much happening on the map. It wasn't like Cure was about to win with a, an attack. But it went from kind of like a passive role after that kind of weird engagement where Zest fell down, 50 supply. Kind of a more passive game to one that just felt like it was in absolute control of the Protoss. When that War Prism got in, it started to uh, screw up Cure's macro, his transitions. His fourth base kind of got bopped, even though it did get some mining. It wasn't really ever confident mining. And he was not able to re-max, which Zest happily did. Zealot's coming to the third base. No defense is there. Kira is going to desperately try and all in against how many? Nine disruptors. Um, well, another seven. We're going to count balls here, guys. Count with me. Another six. Now there's five. All right, so we still got five more disruptors to go through. Nope, no, just kidding. GG. Zest is very good. I'm not even, like, really using my voice that much, but even the amount I'm using is like, oh, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> Let's see here. Chat for Sarmani is happening. And then to the semifinals. God, I want to keep casting, but... I really shouldn't. I don't know, guys. I don't know. 
for now, of course, I'm going to finish this series, but I'm thinking about the future. We'll see. We'll see. Future is never certain. Whew. Eternal Empire for game number two. In the bottom left, up one, it is Zest. In the top right is the Red Terran, it is Cure. So, Cure, I mean, his one shining moment in that last game was that one defensive engagement. Otherwise, we look at what was like a 16 minute game or something like that. It actually was pretty much 80% in Zest control. He dealt with the Widow Mind Drop perfect. He dealt with the Hellion Reaper about as perfect as you can. I mean, I guess perfect would be not letting them in the first place, but. Pretty much as perfect as you can. Took no probe losses. Two doesn't count. Shut up. And uh, and then just like expanded calmly, successfully defended the barracks attack, the bio attack. Like it, it was pretty much Zest's game. Not like a hundred percent, but definitely his game to to throw away leads. And then, well, he kind of did. <laughs> Again, being down fifty supply. Is it's not really a joke for any race. Can a Zerg instantly remax? Yes. Can uh, Disruptor Ball change that? Yes. Can 17 Zealot being warped in change that? Yeah, that, that's actually what happened. But it's never something to be scoffed at. It's never like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, like, yeah, yeah, you gotta worry about that. That was that was not a comfortable position for Zest. But that's really the the Paradox has become such a fun race, like in this matchup especially. Thanks to the change in Legacy of the Void. I mean, if that was a flipping Heart of the Swarm game, not only is there no attack, hello? Is this me? Okay, there we go. Yeah, this is a Heart of the Swarm game. Not only would, like, Zest have never attacked, <laughs> which would have been so, oh, so boring. He also would have probably actually been dead. He would have been like, my seven Colossus died and my seven High Templar died? I don't understand. <laughs> but, ugh, oh, Legacy of the Voids made Protoss so much better. Like, straight up, guys. Anyways, I'm bringing this up. I'm gushing about this because what I was about to say is that after he loses... Oh, that's not... God, can I just compliment you for one second, Zest? When you, like, stop making mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> He even loses a probe. Is that he controlled the flow of the game so well. Was the War Prism mostly it? Yes, yes it was. It was a, there was a lot of momentum stop when that War Prism actually successfully got in the main base despite being on like 10 health. But he was able to do that plus a couple of Zealot run buys and then also control the map and expand confidently while we're covering that supply instead of just letting it snowball into a victory for Cure. It was a little bit on Cure not actually being able to run across the map. You know, very big map that it was. But I do want to say that that was good handling, good style. That's a good representation of the style that Zest was playing there, which is mostly gateway heavy. It's just straight up. Gateway units are so much more entertaining to watch than flipping six Colossus and a dozen storms. Yes, we're trying to come down. Oh my god, ugh. Sorry, I'm just getting flashbacks to old Protoss. Anyways, so not Twilight Council this time. Stargate actually on the way, as well as a Robo. So perhaps similar to what we saw from... Probe. I almost got there. From Probe. Um, so this is actually very weird for Cure. He's actually scouting a little bit for... Aggression. Um... Which is understandable. He got the Hellion for the Adepts, but then he even got a second Hellion, third Hellion? Okay, yeah. So actually, the, the bunker was down, wasn't it? I'm crazy. But he uses the Hellion to scout a little bit. He's also going to do an attack here. He has not seen what Zest is doing, and he might just be assuming that's Twilight Council again. Because uh, everything's been kind of similar. Adept into Soccer Soccer, right? It's actually Phoenix. Phoenix gonna help take out the medevac, but not before the marines unload. Hellions could be lifted by the Phoenix as well. 
But the Medifact does draw the attention first and foremost. Probe's actually pulled into this immediately, and then the one Phoenix tries to help out. It does take away the one-shot kill power of the Hellion squad by picking up one Hellion. Unfortunately, two Hellions still getting to be able to free fire on these probes, get a, quite a few lineups. 13 probes overall go down, and that was not too bad there from Cure. Especially since he didn't know what he was actually going to be up against. Could have been double the Stalkers, and they simply take on the Medivac here, and then the Hellions don't do as much damage somehow. I don't know, but... Well, the Phoenix... Uh, still have their time to shine, but maybe they could have done a better job. Let's blame the Phoenix for now. Delay the Command Center, get some scouting on what the follow-up is here for Cure. Obviously, it's third Command Center. And try and get any SCVs possible to make up for the damage he just took. Now, Zest is on three bases. Chrono Wing, Triple Chrono, Triple Pro Production. But that was still a good blow. And he really doesn't have a lot of super counterattack potential. Oh my god, it's mech. Oh my god. But yeah, unfortunately, Phoenix, while well, they can maybe over time add up to a similar kill count here, it's not nearly as effective as earlier on and all in one go, right? And they also just don't have the potential to actually counter and kill something. Again, if this is like a Twilight Council opener and there's now nine stalkers on his front door, ah, it's a little scary. But it was Phoenix. Not nearly as scary. But yeah, so Cure goes for mech. This is not something that Zest has really scouted yet. It's auto turret harassed. A very bold move, by the way, for someone who's up against Phoenix. Like, what the... F yeah, of course that raven dies. Like, what, <laughs> what else was going to happen there? I don't... I don't know about that one. It does pull back the Phoenix, which is giving Cure even more time to look like he's not going mech. Okay, well, actually, the factories have been scouted. Now, this is obvious, but I do wonder up until then if he had any idea. Just because he didn't all see that. That could have been a tech lab. This could have been two more barracks. But now he should definitely know. Well, what does he do to change things up, though? Like, one of the best things to do against a mech player is just not let them get to three bases. And definitely don't let, the get, let them get to four. If you let them get to three bases very comfortably, nothing interrupts them, really. You're already in a bit of trouble if you have taken damage, you know. If you're expanding to your four and five bases, double upgrading everything, then, like, who cares? But, you know, Zest took damage. And then if you get to four bases, I mean, that's actually kind of scary. I know mech versus Protoss can sometimes be kind of a joke, kind of a meme, kind of bad. <laughs> but in the right hands, in the right circumstances, and I would say definitely in a game where you got an early lead by killing probes, then mech actually is scary. How would you leave? Because I'm sick. And uh, I use my voice for, like, everything that makes me money, you know? <laughs> so I kind of need to save my voice. Nine gateways on the way. So one of the ways that... So the, at the baseline, right, if you knew your opponent was going mech, you're facing someone who always went mech, you'd want to expand aggressively, upgrade aggressively, and probably bop them, as I said, around that three base timing, like right now, still kind of vulnerable. But Eternal Empire also is kind of a good map for mech. You can wall off there, you can wall off there, you get the high ground, whatever. Anyways, hopefully you kill them with your just mass amount of units before they even get to four bases. That's the ideal scenario. But what if you don't get there? That's the big question. And Zest is not getting there. He's actually matching his opponent. I mean, Kira's even a little bit ahead in the fourth base, so he's not expanding better than his mech opponent. He's not upgrading better than his mech opponent. He's actually just matching the upgrades, really. 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one eventually. And he's not outmassing him in that army supply, either. So what do you do at this point? Well, you still have a lot of things that kind of hard counter, quote-unquote. Mech. It's hard to say StarCraft 2 really has true hard counters, just because so much of it is mechanics. But yeah, absolutely. Immortals are one of the biggest reasons, I would say, that mech isn't the standard way to play against Protoss, unlike Brood War. There are other factors, yes, but anyways. They, they're supposed to directly counter it. You can get Colossus, try and take care of some of that Hellbat buffer, if it was that composition. 
but it's not the composition, so I'll get there in a second. And uh, you can try and go mass air, but that is a transition at this point that Zest would be, uh, we find it very difficult to actually afford. So what do you do? I mean, you kind of just, you kind of cry because you have to play versus a mech player. And it's going to take forever for the game to end. And you also just hope that they move out and you get a huge concave. But what if they're not going to move out? What if they're actually going to go to a different composition? It's not the Hellbat Thor tank push or a tank Thor push or whatever. What if they go to Battlecruisers? Well, that's when you kind of have to kill them before the Battlecruiser count gets to about six or seven. That's the... Nothing happened in this game besides those like 12 probes going down and I died with nothing happening That's the super lame game that no one wants but to be honest guys battle cruisers are actually really difficult things to tango with If you're not already beating down the Terran players front door and really forcing them to choose how they spend their money They're gonna choose to spend it on flipping battle cruisers and when they start triple producing battle cruisers with double upgrades as well like the carapace or the um armor upgrade being very helpful on a unit with already high armor like you are actually in a lot of trouble i dare say that mass battle cruisers is kind of overpowered versus protoss they don't have a super solid answer against it but i'm not gonna say it for sure because we see it so rarely but i'm already painting a very grim picture for the protoss ain't i battle cruiser harassment ain't even really what this is about this isn't the zerg opener where you get one two and then three and you kind of laugh as you take out a couple queens and force them to corrupt theirs now you're getting two actual mass battle cruisers kind of as soon as possible kira's allowed to get to five bases without zest doing anything about that zest only barely getting to five bases himself kira was sixth his battle cruiser count is going to continue to grow because you can micro them they stay alive we don't have regen as Terrans. We don't have shield batteries, but we do have repair, and we have teleport. Zest is not going to be able to break this. I pretty much can tell you this right now. This is actually very solid SimCity and tank positioning. Planetary as well. Good God. Good use of the Cyclones. I actually really like that. A couple Cyclones aren't really going to help the more this game goes on, but they could look onto a Nexus. We could pick up with a Phoenix. And Zest is transitioning all into air, trying to get upgrades as well, but I have, I'm really serious about this, guys. Like, battle cruisers are really good. And, like, if you get the opportunity, you can also add on ghosts, which an EMP, if you EMP a battle cruiser, or a, sorry, you EMP a carrier, then I think Yamato one-shots it, which usually it wouldn't. It would, like, two shot or two and a half? Actually, I've forgotten the math at this point. Check out my YouTube, guys. There's a tips and tricks video all about it. That I, I made, but then forgot. Because <laughs> you don't see this very often. But yeah, you can also get to EMPs. And just general, like, baseline, right? EMPs are really good against Protoss. So, you know, you get these gigantic, floating, invincible, almost, battle cruisers, And then you have EMP, like, oh, so good. So good. We'll see what happens, though. We'll see what Zest has in store. He does have a game to lose. You let a mech player grow out of control on a very defensive macro map. Eh, it happens. It happens to everyone. Doesn't feel good, but it happens. So you go into the third game. But that's kind of where I'm headed. Does anyone else hate it when the caster calls the game too early? Well, you know what? You know what? I've seen like five of these games. And like every time the Terran wins. I've played in about a dozen of these on the Protoss' side. And my Protoss sucks, so I'm just going to say that outright. But like, good god. I, I cannot find an answer, and I'm looking at Protoss professionals to find the answer. So let's just let's just all watch together, guys, and try and see how Zest handles this. Uh, teleport micro is gonna be good here. Here we go. He's kind of like, maybe he was thinking about Yamatoing and decided not to. I'm not sure what happened there. Lots of upgrades on the way for both parties. Kira actually was a little lazy about his armor upgrades, which is surprising. But he is... Oh. Huh. And he's also getting plus two ship weapons? He's going back into vehicle weapons? The thing is, is that at one point, one of these armies is supposed to be all air. 
And at another point later down the road, both armies are like literally all air. Okay. Well. All right. He does have two two on his battle cruisers. Still, still well upgraded, but he has actually not repaired his battle cruisers. Oh, okay. He was. He was just they were just they were just hidden. They were just all underneath the battle cruisers. Kira has gotten a lot of orbitals. He's continuing to get upgrades, even the building upgrades, of course. Hi, oh, Jesus. He's got so many missile turrets coming down. He could get a, a Raven and actually do some serious damage, too, with anti armor missile. Not a bad idea. I do like this. But you gotta be careful, because this will take longer than the battle cruisers will take to kill one of your bases and then teleport out. Protoss got recall, but Terran has Yamato teleport. Yeah. Oh, uh, he's actually going to take the fight. It's a little bit dangerous because the ground army is involved as well. He's not teleporting out at all. I mean, he had the ability, but he's taking the fight straight up. But maybe he just might be right. He might actually just win this anyways. The mech army from the right side was not helping very much, but the battle cruisers absolutely won, and I don't know why I doubted myself. I don't know why I doubted what I'd just been talking about the last five minutes. The battle cruisers are actually really good late game PvP. I mean, there wasn't even micro involved in this. He was just like, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Let's fucking do this, man. And then he won the fight. Did he, though? He did. There's not a lot left here. Gonna be cleaned up by the rest of the ground army, but look at that supply. You don't need Viking support for, for battle cruisers. You see more battle cruisers. People think I'm joking. People think I don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm being absolutely candid. I actually do not know what you do against mass battle cruisers. And that was even mass, actually. There was still a lot of ground army to work with, too. He's now going into more mass battle cruisers, but he did add on a lot of Thors. And, uh, yeah, there's another thing that Terran has that's really good against the air options. And, honestly, even the ground options. There's a funny dynamic that happens with Immortals versus Thors. Or really anything with Immortals, right? But it seems to just really be highlighted when they face Thors. Is that when their shield is gone... They actually get obliterated themselves. <laughs> they're not immortal once that shield is gone. And uh, you might think they're great against the Thors, but Thors actually end up winning out. If they just like, if they just run away for a, a hot second, this isn't even enough mortals to even make my point valid. They just actually get obliterated anyways. No point to even talk about it. Mortals are down. Thors are here. Thors will take down all the air army as well because their anti-air is amazing. And the battle cruisers find another base to tackle all on their own. They actually do go down once again. Not much teleport micro coming in here from here. And the last time to defend here is also going to go down. Stalkers are trying their best to help out. It ain't going to work. Here is on like seven bases with a ton of orbitals happily remaxing on whatever the hell he pleases. And Zest is just trying to catch up. He's like a little toddler trying to chase his mama. He's kind of like waddling right now. Oh, you're dead. GG. It's one of those uh, situations when the guy posts this replay on Reddit. And he's like, guys, what do I do against composition? The person who replies with, don't let them get there, is actually right. <laughs> BCs need BC support. Yeah, just make more BCs. Why not? You know? You know? Really, like honestly, the problem is that you usually don't get to at a situation where you can just make three battle cruisers at a time early, and then five battle cruisers at a time. All 
Avoda is pretty bad to mix in. The problem, like, again, like, Cure didn't even really bother Mike in that game. <laughs> but there's even more you can do with battle cruisers than what we saw. The problem with Void Ray is that even if you get Flux Veins, which did actually make them a bit better against battle cruisers for real, is that they're still microed away from. They supercharge themselves, and then the, the battle cruisers are like, lol, bye, and then they come back. They can literally teleport away, like, I don't, I don't know how to quantify measurements in StarCraft 2. <laughs> um, they can go someplace, like, and they just come back 20 seconds later, right? After the overcharge is done. Prismatic alignment is done. And then the voiders are like, oh, well, it's still helpful, right? And you're like, eh, not as much as you thought you were. <laughs> and then, uh... Yeah, I think Thor's, I mean, Thor's outrange void rays are not locked on, that type of thing or whatever, so, and the Thors are also a big problem, like, I think it's an experiment worth trying if Kira was able to do it again, Zest would just be like, okay, let me just, if it could happen again, which I don't think it can, I actually don't think Kira can do that on any other map, then Zest would probably be like, okay, I'm not gonna try attacking you, I'm not even gonna try and go into a ground army, I'm just gonna go pure into Stargates and try and figure out something there. Either that, or tries to kill him with an all-in, which is probably more likely. But let's just say he goes the macro path again. I would love to see someone try Mass Carrier, Tempest, Void Ray, any mixture, any combination. Because you don't see it enough to really determine it. But from what I've gathered, is that one, this isn't a, uh, it's not a big enough problem for people to even start really theory crafting. They kind of just like, shrug at a ladder game when it happens and like continue on and at two it sounds like the micro ability is just too good anyways from what i've i've heard of people trying void race but yeah you don't see it very often um but as i said i don't think cure can do it again eternal empire was a very very abusive map for that type of thing and uh he also got that a little bit of an early game advantage going for the 12 probe cools, kills or whatever it was, and Zest did a Stargate opener, which I talked about it in the very beginning of the game. It's more like harassment, right? You can't you can't go for the the throat slit when you have Phoenix. You can kind of like tap the guy in the head a little bit here and there, and it's really bothersome, but they're gonna kill the guy. So a lot of things were going in favor of Cure that game. And you just, I don't think you can replicate it again here. Not on Triton. Not against someone who's now on guard against it as well. And have shield batters and cans at home ready to support the Tempest army. Um. I mean, okay. Read subscription received. <laughs> Apparently you are doing something People right, are, are going to tell me things as a sentence, as a, like, a declarative sentence, and I'm just going to have to answer with okay, because, I mean, I, I you could be talking about your own games in Gold League, you could be talking about your own games in, in GM League, it actually wouldn't matter, because pros are just on such a different level. And then also, like, are you actually talking out of your ass or not? You know, when I see it, when I see that, just like like you need to do this and this, period. No, I think. No, I guess. No, I saw this actually work out for X player versus X player. Take a look at the replay. I don't. I. I don't know. There's. I don't. I don't know what to say to it, except okay. Uh, thank you, Kikai. Oh, you get me every time, Kikai. Kikai. I did it right. Kai Kai for the two months we Alright, so what do we have here? So, um, Zest goes for Twilight Council opener again, which I do think he finds the most of his strength in this matchup in. It's good to mix it up, so I, I'm not gonna say he shouldn't, but every time he goes away from Twilight Council opener, I go, why is this? Why? Um, he goes for a two gateway opener type deal, uh, which usually would go like one gateway, two gates, or one gate robo, two gates, or one, two robo, you know, something like that. 
But like a much faster second gateway also helps kind of wall off. And then the robo helps wall off too. He is obviously thinking about the Hellion openers once again, which he absolutely should be thinking of. So he saw the reactor. He saw that it was very likely going to be more than two Hellions. Definitely four, but it's actually six. And he is prepared to deal with that. But he's also got to worry about being a drop. He doesn't have the units, looks like, to go actually scout and see if it's a starport proxy. It's not. But it, certainly if it wasn't proxy, the medevac would already be hidden. And he just needs to worry about everything at once. The stalker actually probably be plugging that hole. Plug it up. Not like carry, but like a, like a... Oh, come on. Plug it. Oh, wait. No, it's actually a wall. Whoa. Whoa. That gateway not being done does not show its full size. That actually tripped me out, man. Okay, then. Never mind. He did plug it up. And Cure's opener has been completely denied, and that is actually very important to note, guys. Because Zest denied that opener while getting to three bases, getting every upgrade and tech structure he generally would. It wasn't like he really sacrificed a lot to defend that. And Cure, in the, on the other side of things, he sacrificed 600 minerals worth of extra production, faster stim timing, faster reactive building, like, like everything, right? For those six Hellions that have not done anything. The one good thing here for Cure is that Zest is yet again at a position where he will not immediately counter and slit his throat. Although he would have a pretty okay counter, I, I feel. The bunker is up. The Master Bear would happen. He wouldn't do too much, but it's actually kind of scary. He's not going to die immediately. Because six Hellions is not a fighting force. But he still delayed a lot of production to do this. And it hasn't done anything yet. I like that he keeps the Hellions alive, though, because while 12 kills, 20 kills at 4 minutes is flipping amazing, 20 kills at 8 minutes is also pretty damn good, right? So keep those alive. Try and hit another timing. Try and get a distraction going. And attack with your main bio army. Kier scans ahead, sees there's not a whole lot defending a juicy-looking probe line with 6 Hellions. You're almost guaranteed to get a couple of probes. This isn't the 20 probes I was talking about. It ends up being six, seven, eight, eight, nine, actually. Nine, because the Liberator is doing some damage. There we go. Soccer's being warped in there. Zest, I believe, had something scout the army on the front lines. I want to say there was something, and he does certainly have a big enough army to defend the actual attack. No upgrades, though, and that's actually something really critical here. We have 10 gateways, no forges. You might think, oh, is he just forgetting his, his forges? Nope, he's gonna bop this push and then immediately counter and probably win the game. I feel like that's actually very possible. He needs a warp prism to really round out that prediction from me, but yeah. If he doesn't do that, then he might have actually forgotten his forges. <laughs> I find that unlikely. Kira can't really push into this. I'm not sure where he scanned. Ready for dust off. Oh, the main. Ready. Oh, okay. Uh, so a very interesting scan position. He was probably checking for the gateway count. Because I'm not sure what else. Like, you might have seen the probes also weren't fully mining. From the natural. But I think he was trying to see, like, oh, are you doing that forgeless thing? Which is super hard to scout, seriously. I think you would know based off the timing of the current like timer, like, hey, your 1-1's one, not done and or finishing, like constantly clicking on the army. And then a scan would also reveal maybe the lack of forges, but what if they're just over here? We're over here. It's a very interesting scan placement. Regardless of what uh, tipped him off, like, the pullback was essential. Like, if he had pushed into that, Zest is going to swallow him and spit him out. So he needs to pull back. But now Zest does have this really crucial time right now where he does not have upgrades on the way. And he will fall behind in that. If he does not take a serious lead right here, right now, Widowmind's actually hurting most of the bio army. At least they had Colossus. It's kind of interesting in all what that's about. But the Raven... Trying to help with the interference matrix is temporarily helping a lot, but the immortals do not die. They're still going to help with the main engagement, and Zest is pushing in here. Zealot's actually very cautiously staying back in case there's widow mines, or perhaps they're supposed to go to the third base. That's what they're supposed to do. Kira does take a uh, poor engagement despite trying his best efforts to try and figure out this game and actually react to it. 
It just is not going so well. And oh my god, the big zealot wraparound from the back almost gets the full surround. Here barely slips out of that. But he's got a very poor army size to combat what Zest has, even though he now has 1-1 one -one upgrades. His Raven is out of juice. His Medivacs are out of juice. Thankfully, two more now come out. And his Winamine count was uh, ugh, scarily low. He need a lot of Winamines against that many Zealots. Third TC was saved, and that's the extremely good news. Upgrades are still continuing on here as he gets an Armory and a Jiren Bay. Zest uh, does seriously need to worry about Splash. The game goes on. He didn't kill Cure, but he stabbed him. Almost mortally. But if the upgrades were to continue, let's say that Kira gets a 2-2, that means he also got a third CC up mining and had production consistently, then Zest's army gets worse. So he needs to start thinking about Splash. Which he's going to go for Storm. That's the easiest, the fastest thing to get into when you do the style. Right, you already have that Twilight Council. You already have Mass Amount of Gateways. Oh, he's going to try to take this third? Oh, that's poor timing. But it usually is, is countered by someone who's usually going for, like, their Ghost Academy around now. Well, now I think I have a third base mining. Cure is still hanging on, man. I'm actually going to give big props to his ability to read this game. Is, uh, I think some other professional Terrans, they're just like, run headfirst into there. But Zest is absolutely still in control. He's trying to catch up on the upgrades. No doubt a lot of uh, Chronos going into that. He's going to go for a big wraparound once again. Auto Turret's going to come down and distract a lot of the attention of the units. But oh my god, the storms. Oh, Zest is particularly good. Very consistent about using a War Prism for his storms. Third TC goes down, and that is it. That was actually no contest right there. This is like, now you die. Here's like, no, please, I really need these points. Zest doesn't care. GG. And Zest continues with a fairly good run of the EPTs. He was at Katowice, so... It's not like he could play in the last...